Paint this pile of pebbles and become a watercolour whiz. So to paint this pile of pebbles we're going to use two colours which are more or less opposite each other on the colour scale, on the colour wheel. We've got Luna Blue by Daniel Smith and we've got Cadmium Scarlet by Winsor & Newton. If you haven't got Luna Blue you can make a close approximate by mixing any cold dark blue such as Thalo Blue or Windsor Blue and putting a speck of black in it. Then if you haven't got Cadmium Scarlet you can use any reddish uh, orange. Okay, so let's make a start by mixing up a puddle of the Luna Blue. Enough of a puddle for us to do the whole pile of these five lovely pebbles. You can either pour some water into the middle well to make a big puddle or you can spray it in or you can do as I'm doing, I'm just adding brushfuls and brushfuls of water so that I can be a bit more accurate in the, dil the dilution of the paint that I've got. So I think that should give me enough to cover up the whole stack of pebbles. So we want to start at the top and bring this lovely lunar blue colour all the way down. And you're very welcome to follow along with this tutorial on YouTube. But if you'd like the extra support of the print printable paint along pack, which includes all the reference photos, the outline, the grayscale, etc., plus the supplies list, then please join my Patreon site. For just £3 a month, you get every watercolour whiz pack for free, that's here on YouTube. You won't get adverts interfering your viewing pleasure. Plus you'll get over 20 hours of other videos on my Patreon site, all accessible to you in the comfort of your own home. And every month you'll get an automatic email on the first of the month with the new tutorials for that month. Plus you get a chance to vote on the subjects as well. So if you'd like to do that then there's a link in the description below or there's a link at the end of the screen of this video at the end of the tutorial. So this lunar blue is going on now. And the paper I'm using is Two Rivers, 100% cotton paper, and it's £200 in weight, and it's got a cold pressed surface, also known as NOT, N-O-T, and it's leaving, um, it's making a it lovely granulated effect because there's a bit of surface texture on this paper. So now I'm going to have to work quickly because I'd like to put in some shadow colour while the pebbles are still moist. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you what the paper's looking like at the moment. So you can see there's a shine on the paper, there's moisture in the paper. And so that I've got moisture, then my moisture will be guaranteed while I put the shadows on. I'm going to start right at the top of the pebbles and come swooshing down, cascading down through every pebble, going from side to side of each pebble to make sure that moisture is consistently uh, distributed around each of the pebble shapes. Now I'm going to quickly add some red, tiny speck of red, into the blue colour that we had in the middle. And as you can see, it's greying that down quite a lot. So now I'm going to drop in this shadow colour all on the left hand side of the pebbles. To start adding a little bit of form to this pile of pebbles. I'm going to tip it slightly to the right and then tip it back to the left. And now because we've still got quite a bit of moisture left in the paper, I'm going to now move that dilute puddle of paint out of the central well and I'm going to go for a much stronger mix now of pigment 
I'm going to start with the lunar blue, bring that into the centre. And what I'm mixing now is a pigmented mix. This is much less runny than what I've put on already. And then again I'm going to pick up some of that cadmium scarlet. And this will cause us to get a very strong dark. But it will be a lovely complementary dark. And before I put it onto the pebbles I'm just going to tip them once more to distribute some of that moisture across a little bit more. And now I'm going to start adding this shadow colour following my grayscale posterised image which you get if you join and you become a patron you'll get this paint along pack. And following roughly where I can see much stronger tones mostly in the left hand side of the pebbles but some of the places where the pebbles sit above another one there's a cast shadow on the pebble beneath it. And some of the shadows come right out to the right hand side. And there's a definite dark shadow right at the base of this bottom pebble. Okay, so now you can see the pebbles are starting to have a bit of form in them. And again, I'm just going to tip them from side to side, from left to right, just to help distribute the colour around evenly and naturally without using my brush and I won't leave any brush strokes. Now what I'd like to do is to wait a little while because I want to let the, paper, uh, the water soak in a bit more before I use my thirsty brush to wipe out some highlights. And my thirsty brush is a brush that I've moistened very well and that I'm going to dry on my towel. And just while we're waiting for that paint and paint water to soak in, let's look at the grayscale image again. We can see that on the top there's a strong highlight coming over to the right. On this pebble there's quite a strong highlight on this right hand edge. Then there's a definite highlighted shape all on this pebble. There's a little bit on that one and then a much bigger one on the bottom one. Also while we're looking at the grayscale, can you see that in the middle of each pebble right there where they meet there's a much stronger dark in there one two three four you can really see those darks can't you and another trick as well if you want to really see shadows and highlights more easily turn your image upside down and can you see now that everything jumps out at you much more easily it's because you're making the right hand side of your brain work which supposedly helps us as artists to identify tones more easily so while I've been talking, I'm just keeping an eye on my paper wetness because watercolour is all about moisture. You can see there's still a very slight moisture sheen on that paper, which is just what I want. And now if I start to lift out the highlights, the paint won't run back in so much, okay? So that's why I waited a little bit longer. So again, let's get back to my grayscale. I'm going to follow this pattern and lift out the highlights that I can see in that image. So I'm using the corner of my brush and dragging it down like that. Rinse it each time. There's a little highlight on this one. Press the brush in and drag. Rinse and wipe. You've always got to go back in with a dry, clean brush. Otherwise you'll be rubbing paint back in. This one's got quite a definite cut of highlighted area on the pebble. So I'm using this sort of flat edge of the brush to cut it and curve around and there's a sort of incision of light into this pebble as well and a little bit more on the tip and the bottom one has quite a big uh, swathe of light cut in and I'm rinsing and wiping each time because otherwise it gets very smudgy and dirty And can you see how those shapes are holding now because the paper's not too wet? See the highlights are there? And beautiful granulation on the paper, isn't that gorgeous? 
So again, I'm, before I finish now um, on this section, I just want to go back to those highlights again. Start at the top, dragging, pulling that paint out, rinse and wipe, dragging, pulling that paint out. I'm doing it one more time because a little bit of seepage might have happened. And the last one. Okay. Right, now this is the stage where we're going to let everything dry and then we're going to come in and put some final strong shadows in to finish. Okay, it's the next day now and this pile of pebbles is bone dry. And what I've got is my grayscale image and what I want to do now is put in those much stronger shadows, those much darker tones or values as we call them, in between the pebbles and on the left hand side where they're out of the sunlight. Now to put these on I want to work this way. <clears throat> because I'm right handed I'm going to work top to bottom and left to right. So it's easier for me to do the darkening of these shadow areas this way. So let me zoom out a little bit more so we get a better picture there. So get in as close as I can without losing both images and then I can show you what I'm going to do. Right, so what I've got now is a mixture of the Lunar Blue, which is our darkest colour. And once again I'm using, a, there's some moisture on my brush, I'm adding a bit more water to it from my pot. I'm going to be making a pigmented wash. So there's my Lunar Blue. And I'm going to add a, uh, a speck of the Cadmium Scarlet, a little bit at a time, because I don't want these shadows to turn too red, but I do want them to be muted and more greyed. So I'm picking up the red and adding that there, a bit more of the Lunar Blue. And all the time I'm keeping in mind what colour I've already got on those pebbles, because the shadow colour we've got has got to be sort of believable, hasn't it? So now that I've got that shadow colour, I'm going to start applying this really dark area right in the middle it comes over there a little bit, let's taper it out there. Can you see what I'm doing there? We zoom in a little bit closer. I'm leaving this area pale, or I'm leaving this area unpainted and I'm going to come down and do this dark area, it's very small sort of slither, a sort of ellipse, an elliptical shape. It's quite strong there isn't it, it's a quite a hard line of it there. And again, it's much darker there where there's a very strong cast shadow in between that pebble. Tails off there, then there's another one there. So as you can see, I'm sort of putting these extra tonal darks on the pebble to show where the light is not reaching. And this shows us that the pe some pebbles are on top of the other pebbles. And because we've already got some tone on, some colour on from the previous washes, the pebbles now are developing in their 3D uh, quality. Okay, now let me turn that round the right way. So can you see now we've turned the lights on on those pebbles and we could leave it at that but I think what we'll do is we will soften some of those dark passages I've just put on and I'm going to moisten my size 6 brush I'm going to flick the hairs of that brush on the corner of my jug. So now I've got a brush that's just got a tiny bit of moisture in there. And again, I'm going to go back to working on this um, horizontal area so that I can moisten an area above that hard line there and then blend it out. Rinse my brush, flick my brush, soften into the dark area painted. 
go all around and soften it. This is why we've got to work quickly because the paint can dry too hard and then it takes too much work to soften it. I'll taper that off. Rinse my brush and flick it. I'm going to move right into these pebbles now so you can see. Work along this darker edge. You might need to sort of rub your brush and scumble it a bit to encourage that paint to dissolve and soften. Taper that away to nothing. Rinse, flick. Same again, I'm working on the outermost edge of this dark passage of Luna Blue mixed with the Cadmium Scarlet. Really, I'd like to turn my board around again because now I've got to try and see it. Really, I'd like to soften it from here, but if I did that, I'd have to turn my board around and I don't want to do that to you. So I'm just going to do the best I can working at it from the other side. Rinse and flick. What you can do is just do one pebble at a time if you want and moisten it before the paint gets as hard as mine is because mine's a little bit too dry to be honest. Taper it away. And there we have a pile of pebbles. So I hope you've enjoyed this watercolour whiz. If you do and you feel like leaving a comment, that would really help this channel because if you mention watercolour whiz in your comments, people are going to find us more easily and it'll help my ratings, which is always a good thing. Also, easily giving it a thumbs up, you know, clicking that little thumbs up button down below really does make a difference. And finally, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button and then once you do that, you'll see a little grey bell appear. If you click the grey bell to accept all, uh, to get all notifications, then you'll get notifications notifications about these watercolour whizzes. If you don't click the grey bell, you won't get them, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed that watercolour whiz and that it'll, uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now!